I'm using box cake mix to make these. If you have small kids around, like I do, there's bound to be some cookie making going on. And I wanna help to make it a little easier. Hey y'all, I'm Valerie, and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm sharing six delicious cookie recipes, all made with box cake mix. Okay y'all, let's get started. First, I'm gonna make some chocolate peppermint kiss cookies. In a large bowl, you're gonna add in one chocolate cake mix. I'm using the dark chocolate fudge, but you can use any chocolate cake mix you like. I just thought that the dark chocolate would go really good with that peppermint. I also added in one stick of melted butter, along with two eggs, and three fourths teaspoon of peppermint extract. And if you don't have peppermint extract, or maybe you really just don't care for it, you can always use vanilla. Now you're gonna mix this until it's well combined. And this batter is gonna be a lot thicker than what cake batter would be, but not as thick as cookie dough. So somewhere in between there. Now I'm gonna cover this and let it chill in the refrigerator for at least an hour. That way it has a chance to firm up and it'll be a lot easier to scoop into cookies that way. And we also want them to hold their shape as much as possible. I had actually let mine chill for about two hours. I've got my cookie sheet lined with a silicone liner, but you can also use parchment paper. And I'm using my cookie scoop for this. Mine don't have a size on it, but it holds about two tablespoons. You're just gonna scoop some of that cookie dough and place it on the baking sheet. Do you have a new cookie recipe you've tried here lately and you love? Sometimes we just stick to the same things, but I am always up for trying a new recipe. And by the way, you don't wanna flatten these. You can just leave them round. They bake at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. And while those are baking away in the oven, I'm gonna unwrap some candy cane Hershey Kisses. Aren't these just adorable? And here they are out of the oven. And y'all, do as I say and not as I do. I did not give these any time to cool off. I immediately started putting on those Hershey Kisses. And they looked like they were gonna be fine for a little bit there, but then they weren't. They didn't turn out bad though. So I was picking up one to show y'all. I tilted it sideways and I quickly learned that that Hershey Kiss was completely melted. So instead of being little kiss cookies or little blossom cookies, these kind of turned into um, thumbprint cookies. <laughs> or that's what they kind of ended up looking like. I am not complaining though, they were absolutely delicious. And since some of them had started to melt and flatten out, I just decided to do them all that way. So I just took each cookie and gave it a few little taps. And that did the trick, almost. <laughs> They all still had that little tiny point there. So I drug my knife across just the top there to flatten it out. And you'll wanna do this before they start to harden back up. But if you want them to look like a kiss, just give them about five minutes or so to cool off after they come out of the oven before you put that kiss on. If not, you'll have flat little Hershey kisses like I did. These turned out a little fudgy on the insides and they had just the right amount of peppermint flavor. These were so, so good and you definitely need to try them. I was bound and determined to make some little gingerbread man cookies out of this gingerbread cake mix. In a large bowl, you're gonna add in a gingerbread cake mix. And to help these cookies not spread, I'm adding one fourth cup of all purpose flour, along with two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm just giving this a little whisk before I add in a couple more things. Now I'm adding in one egg and six tablespoons of melted butter. 
And now you're going to mix all this together until it's just combined. Just try not to overmix it. This batter will be thick, but it's still a little bit on the sticky side. If we tried to cut out shapes now, it just wouldn't work. And trust me, I've tried it. I've got a pretty big piece of parchment paper there. I put that gingerbread cookie dough on there. We're going to chill this, but it's much easier to flatten it out before you chill it. So I placed another piece of parchment paper on the top of that cookie dough. And then I'm just using my rolling pin to spread it out. And yep, I said spread. That just works better for me. At least to get started. After you get it pretty flat, it's easier to roll with the rolling pin. And this one I've got here has some little attachments on it. Kind of like little settings and I have mine set to 1 4th inch thick. After I got it all flattened out, I transferred it to a baking sheet. And then you'll want to pop this in the refrigerator or even better, the freezer for at least two hours to completely chill. Because the colder you get it, the less they'll spread. And here it is out of the freezer. And you can use any kind of cookie cutters you want here. And just because we're using a gingerbread mix does not mean you have to do little gingerbread men. You can do gingerbread Christmas trees or snowmen or whatever you like. Just be very, very careful here when you're trying to push them out of the cookie cutter because they will break. And if it happens to not come out with the cookie cutter, just get you a spatula and slide it up under it and get it out that way. Now I had already done three batches of these and they did spread a little bit, a lot more than I wanted them to. And that would be the reason why I'm making them for the fourth time here. I told y'all I was bound and determined. So I just baked six at a time. And before I put these in the oven to bake, I put them back in the freezer to chill for another hour. I went ahead and cut out the rest of that dough. I'm not going to bake them this way, but it was much easier to fit them in the freezer like this. So whenever I'm ready to bake them, I'll pull six out at a time and then place them on the cookie sheet and bake them. Here's those first six that I cut out. They've been in the freezer for about an hour. Now they're going straight from the freezer to the oven. And I'm going to bake these at 350 for eight to 10 minutes. And here they are out of the oven. They turned out so cute and I have got to decorate these. So I'm making a little batch of royal icing and I figured just in case y'all want to try this, I'm going to show you how. In a small bowl, I added three tablespoons of water along with one tablespoon of meringue powder. Then you're going to mix this for about five minutes until it gets really frothy. It pretty much like tripled in size here. And now I'm going to add in two cups of powdered sugar. You may need a little more though. It just really depends on the consistency you're going for. And now you're just going to mix this until it forms stiff peaks. And I just couldn't leave it all white. I had to add some color to it. I'm going to do a red, green, and white. So I grabbed two extra bowls to separate that out. And you can really see how thick that mixture is in that little bowl there. When a recipe says beat to stiff peaks, that's what it means. And I'm using gel food coloring. I have much better luck with the gel than I have with the liquid. And when you're coloring icing, do keep in mind that as it sits, it does get darker. So I know since I'm showing y'all all this, this video is going to be quite a bit longer. And I'm curious to know, do y'all like the longer videos? I like to get to the point, but Sometimes I just like to share a little extra and this to me is a little extra because it's fun and I love to decorate cookies and cakes and whatever. Now I am not a professional and mine do not look perfect, but I'm just kind of showing you what I did. And by the way, if you're new here, I post easy recipes all the time. I share things like dinners, crock pot meals, 
desserts, and a whole lot more. So if any of that sounds like something you're interested in, I would really love to have you here. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. That way you get notified of all my future videos. These turned out so cute and they were absolutely adorable. And the best part of it all would have to be the decorating. I'm telling you, when I start decorating stuff like that, it makes me feel like a little kid again. These were delicious, but they were almost too cute to eat. These red velvet gooey butter cookies are one of my favorites. I'm using my mixer for this to make it a little bit easier on myself. We're starting out by adding a block of cream cheese and just make sure it's softened to room temperature. If not, just throw it in the microwave for about 30 seconds to a minute or so. That's what I always do and it works fine for me. I'm also adding one stick of butter and that needs to be softened also. I guess you can tell mine was not. I had cut it into slices and microwaved it for about 20 seconds just to soften it up. Now just mix that until it's well combined. I've still got the mixer going here and I'm just adding in one egg. When that egg is completely incorporated, we can go ahead and add in the cake mix. I'm using a red velvet cake mix, but you could really use any cake flavor you like. And you're just going to add that cake mix right on in. And then mix it until just combined. These are also really good with just a vanilla cake mix. The chocolate is good and even the butter pecan. Oh, and the strawberry too. And even though I did scrape my bowl down halfway through, I still ended up missing a few spots on the bottom there. But that's okay. Just give it one last mix and you're good to go. And this dough is very sticky, but that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. Now you can go ahead and grab yourself a cookie sheet. And I've got a little bowl of powdered sugar that I'm going to use to roll the cookie dough in. You just want to keep that close by. And I'm using a two tablespoon size cookie scoop, but you could also do them a little bigger or a little smaller, just whatever you prefer. And I try very hard not to touch that cookie dough, that way it don't dye my fingers red. And I know I can put gloves on to do this, but to me it makes it a little hard to do when you have gloves on, so I just try to be careful and not touch that cookie dough. I just drop little scoopfuls in that powdered sugar and roll them around and then you just place them on your baking sheet. Now these go into the oven to bake at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. I always like to take mine out at 10 minutes though, sometimes even 9. I like them really fudgy on the insides. And I was feeling like adding a little something extra to these. I had some of that cream cheese frosting in my pantry. So on half of those cookies, I added a little frosting. And then I had some chopped pecans and I chopped them up and sprinkled some of them on top. So you can really get creative with the frosting here too. You can leave them plain. And also what would be really good is a lemon cake mix with lemon frosting. I think those would be delicious. And on the other half of those cookies, I just dusted them with a little more powdered sugar. These are quick and easy to make and they're delicious. I had actually made these to take to my in-laws for a dinner and everyone loved them. And even Lacey, I did not think she was a fan of red velvet, but she loved them too. Now, she only loved the plain ones. She didn't like the ones with the pecans on them. But that's why I did half and half. That way, everyone would have some they enjoy. And if you've ever had Paula Deen's ooey gooey butter cake, these are like that, only in cookie form. When I seen these cake mix thumbprint cookies, I knew I had to try them. I'm starting out in a large bowl you're going to add in a French vanilla cake mix and make sure it's a 15.25 ounce. The Duncan Hines is good. All of Betty Crocker's, they have reduced theirs to 13.25. So I'm just not sure it would turn out the same. I also added in about a tablespoon of lemon zest along with four tablespoons of melted butter and two eggs. Now you're going to mix all this together until just combined.
I scraped that bowl down just to make sure I got everything. I've got my cookie sheet here. I love these silicone liners. I think mine are just the Amazon basics, but I love them. I'm using a two tablespoon size cookie scoop because I couldn't find my smaller one. So I'll show you in a second what I did. You'll also need a little bit of all purpose flour close by. So I scooped out a little portion of that cookie dough and I made sure I covered my fingers with all purpose flour just so it wouldn't stick to them. And it made them a little easier to handle. And I just separated that scoop into two pieces. These cookies are supposed to be small. I just rolled each of those around and made sure they were pretty smooth. So this recipe ends up making a lot of thumbprint cookies, which to me, that is not a problem. I just continued with the rest until I used up all of that dough. And I ended up filling up two cookie sheets with these. Once you get them all on there, we're gonna make a little indention you can use your knuckle or you can use a teaspoon. I'm using the end of my whisk, so just use what you can find. You're just gonna make a little dip in all of those cookies. And look, here I go again, trying to pick it up and show y'all, but I realized quickly that I did not need to do that. After you finish all those, we're gonna add a little bit of jam to them. I'm using strawberry preserves just because that's what I already had on hand. And you're just gonna add a teeny tiny little amount to each cookie. Each cookie held about a half of a teaspoon. You could also use raspberry or apricot preserves for this. Okay, I have to know, what's your favorite Christmas cookie? I'm curious. While the oven is preheating to 350, I'm gonna put these cookies in the refrigerator to chill for about 10 minutes. Here they are out of the refrigerator and they're ready to go in the oven. I baked them at 350 for 15 minutes. The recipe said that they would be done when the edges are set and the bottoms are slightly brown. And I think they turned out pretty perfect. Recipe called for a little glaze and I am not skipping out on that. Just a half a cup of powdered sugar and three teaspoons of lemon juice. But if you want it a little thicker, you can just add a little more powdered sugar. I ended up drizzling this on with a spoon, but I wish I would have put it in a Ziploc bag and then snipped off the corner and then kind of used that to pipe it on. That way I wouldn't have to keep going back to the bowl to get more. But this did fine too, so I'll know for the next time at least. I was so happy with how these turned out. They're soft on the inside, but also a little crispy on the outside. I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure no one's gonna know that you made these with a box of cake mix. Those, I think they turned out so beautiful. I was so proud of them. Like I said, you can change up the flavor of cake mix and change the preserves and just make them your own. Everybody went crazy over these cake mix monster cookies. Starting out in a large bowl, Added in half a cup of brown sugar along with half a cup of peanut butter. And I recommend using the creamy kind. She's your favorite brand though. I'm also adding one egg, three tablespoons of water, and one and a half sticks of softened butter. And here I go again. I forgot to sit mine out. Just cut it up into pieces and then microwaved it for about 15 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this together before I add in the rest. you're gonna add in one box of yellow cake mix. I'm gonna mix this until everything is well incorporated. Okay, just a few more things. I'm adding two cups of the quick cooking oats, half a cup of the mini semi-sweet chocolate chips, and of course we have to add on holiday M&Ms. did the mini ones and I added a half a cup of those. And you're just gonna fold this together until it's all combined. By the way, I have to give full credit for this recipe to Julia Pacheco. It's a recipe out of her brand new cookbook. Well, I have been loving this cookbook. Not only does she have some delicious sweet treats in here, 
I just made her Christmas crack toffee bars and they were amazing. Her cookbook is on sale now. She has lots of easy dinner ideas, crock pot recipes, and pretty much anything you can think of in here. It would also be perfect to give as a Christmas gift, so I'll leave her link to her cookbook in the description box below. That way, if you're interested, you can go check it out. She is the absolute sweetest. Got my cookie sheet here lined with my silicone liner. Also my cookie scoop. That one holds two tablespoons. It's the one I normally use. Now you're just going to scoop out portions of that dough and place them on the cookie sheet. After I got them all on there, Julia adds a few M&Ms on the top of hers, so you know I had to do that too. These go into the oven to bake at 350 for 12 to 13 minutes. And you're going to leave them on the cookie sheet here to completely cool. I have got to say, these are a new favorite around here. They don't spread much, but they're a little crispy on the outside, almost like a shortbread, really soft on the inside. They were absolutely delicious. And don't forget to check out that cookbook below. Trust me, you're going to love it. You have got to try these German chocolate cookies. In a large bowl, you're going to add in a chocolate cake mix. You can use a German chocolate cake mix, but this is what I had on hand, so that's what I used. I'm also adding half a cup of oil, along with two eggs. Now you're going to mix that together until it's well combined. For the add-ins here, I'm adding one cup of sweetened shredded coconut. If you want to use unsweetened, you can go right ahead. I also added one cup of chopped pecans and a 12 ounce bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. I thought I was smart here. I was going to use my dough whisk to try to mix this together, but it ended up turning out a little harder than I thought. It was just easier to use that spatula. I'm using my cookie sheet. Do y'all call it a cookie sheet or a baking sheet? I just call it the first thing I can think of. And y'all know the drill. Just scoop that cookie dough and place it right on the cookie sheet. And I tried to space mine a little bit apart that way just in case they spread. It's always better to be safe than sorry, especially when you're trying a new recipe. Now these go into the oven to bake at 350 for seven to 10 minutes. And here they are out of the oven. They turned out so good. And if you love German chocolate cake, I know you're gonna love these. And if you're not a fan of the coconut or pecans or one or the other, you can always just leave them out. Or you could also just do double pecans or double coconut. And y'all look at these. Do they not look amazing? They were super easy to make and they came together quick. And they would also be perfect for Christmas. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like these. Don't forget to subscribe down below for more easy recipes. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and I will see you in the next one.